Welcome everybody to this 99 magic guide being brought to you by somebody who only has level 97 magic. This is gonna be good. So there are a lot of different methods to train mage and this video is probably gonna be pretty long. So if you look in the comment section down below, there will be timestamps to different levels. So if you're looking for a certain level in particular, just check down there and it can move you right to that point in the video. Also, if you have any questions about the different methods that are shown in the video here, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below and I will do my best to get back to all the comments with as good of an answer as I can give you. But until then, let's get into the video. So to start this, you're gonna to wanna to find any area with some cows in it. The easiest one in my opinion is the cow pen just north of Lumbridge. You can see it here as it's where the big, like, glowy thing over here that's rotating is. So this is where you want to come on the map. The gear that you want to bring is the blue wizard hat if you have level 45 defense and the Fremenic Trials quest complete. You can bring the Farseer helm, but I'm assuming that if you have level 1 mage that you won't have that completed, so a blue wizard hat is what I recommend bringing. You'll want to bring a Amulet of Magic. Now you could bring a Amulet of Glory or a Fury Amulet, but their attack bonuses are the exact same at 10 Magic bonus, so the Amulet of Magic is just a cheap alternative. If you have the other ones, you can bring them, but you won't be getting hit here for the first bit, so the defensive stats on the other ones won't matter. You'll want to bring Zamorak Monk Top and Bottom. You'll want to bring a Seer's Ring. This is the only ring that actually gives you any Mage bonus, unless you have a new Hydra Ring, but I'm assuming a level 1 Mage you won't have that, because that is an untradeable that you get from a 95 Slayer boss. So, Seer's Ring is what I would recommend bringing. Combat Bracelet, uh, that is also something you can bring at the start, so that is your best in glove slot, unless you have 75 HP, which in that case you can bring the Tormented Bracelet, but again I'm assuming at level 1 mage you won't have 75 HP yet. Then also you'll want to bring a Staff of Air, Water, Earth, and Fire, as you're going to be casting elemental spells, and those will just save you runes. Uh, you have nothing yet for your Boots, Shield, or cape slot, so do not worry about them just yet. So why I like the Lumbridge spot here is you can just see this fence here, you can stand on the outside of it here and just cast your spell in onto the cows inside. What you want to do is you want to equip the staff that correlates with what spell you're using uh, in rune wise. So for example here I'm going to be using the Windstrike spell. So I'm going to have Mind Runes with me as I need to cast using those Mind Runes. And then I'm also going to have a Staff of Air on me as that's going to give me unlimited Air Runes. So I'm going to go to my double cross swords here, go to Spell. Don't go to the Spell with the Shield on it as that'll give you Defense XP and Mage XP. Uh, unless you do want them both, but it'll be less Mage XP than if you were to just cast the spell normally. It halves it between the two. So click on the air on um, the uh, wind strike and then you want to cast it on the cows until you get to level 5 magic. I wouldn't recommend worrying at all about the cow hides or the bones. Uh, it is not worth it to bank them at all so just stand on the other side of the fence here and just have it on auto cast, kill the, sp kill the cow and just keep going until you get to level 5 magic. At level 5 magic, you'll want to have mind runes and air runes with you, so do make sure that you bring the air runes with you um, when you come to the cow pen. Then you'll want to change over to your staff of water, because now that you're level 5, you can start to cast water strike. Now do make sure that you change over to water strike and don't use wind strike. You can still use it because you have those air runes in your inventory, but water strike not only does more damage, but gives you more XP. Same process. Just attack the cow, and you'll want to do this until you get to level 9 magic. At level 9 magic, you want to change over to your Staff of Air, and repeat the process, changing over to Earth Strike, and killing the cow. You'll want to do this until you get to level 13. And once you're at level 13, you'll want to change over to your Staff of Fire. This is the best uh, strike spell that you can do, which is your fire spell, so you'll be using one mind, two airs, and then you won't have to worry about the fires at all. 
This right here, if you were to splash, is what, and you were to do with the cheap method, which is striking, uh, is the spell that you'd use all the way up to 99. I'm not going to recommend that in the video, as that takes a very, very long time. But if that's something that you do want to do, uh, there are many guides for that. But for this, you'll want to just, again, keep killing the cows until you get to level 19. I should note that I will actually be advising to splash it sometimes, but you'll also be doing other stuff with it. That method for using the fire strike, it'll be the same, but you will just simply use the fire strike, nothing else. So it'll be a lot less XP, just to clarify that. Once you have got yourself to level 19, you want to find yourself somewhere where you can attack something like at the Lumberage Cow Pen, where it cannot attack back. You can do this on cows, you can do this on, for example, this uh, mage that is in the Barok Castle here. You can do it on the Lesser Demon, in, a demon inside of the Wizard Tower. Anywhere really where you can attack something, but something cannot attack you back. Now, this might seem a little counterintuitive, but you actually don't want to wear mage gear for this next part because you want to be splashing, which means that you will use the attack on the NPC, but it won't do it won't actually do its effect or any damage. Uh, this is something that people do to AFK, for example, the fire strike, like how I said in the previous clips, but that's not something I'm gonna recommend, so don't worry about that. Why we're gonna be doing this is because we're gonna want to cast curse. Now, this if it hits, there's a timer on how long in between you can cast, like, if let's say you, you cast it and it hits, you can't cast it again for another, uh, let's say, five seconds. I don't actually know the timer, I'm just saying, guessing off the top of my head. But if you splash, then it's only the amount of time between spells that it takes. So you can basically just go click on it, use, click on it, use. You can't do it as fast as you want, it's as fast as the game allows you to do it, but it's still less time than if you were to use it was to hit which grants the exact same amount of xp as if you were to splash it and have to wait for the cooldown on it so that is why we are trying to splash so for this you're going to want to have a staff on you um of your runes of the runes that you need uh, i'm taking a staff of earth to start out with we'll get into that in a second i'm also just using a iron full helm iron plate body iron plate legs a iron kite shield and green dehyde van braces because this brings my magic bonus to negative 65 which is what i need to splash hence why i have this gear you don't want anything that gives you any more magic bonus because then you won't splash and you don't need any amount of less magic bonus because you're at 65 you splash so this right here cheap gear and all that you'll need to splash so you can do this method up to either 43, 45, or 55, depending on how you'd like to do it. Uh, I will show you what the other methods are, but at a max, what you'll need is three or 648 water runes and 5,610 body runes. I would also recommend bringing a mud battle staff. You won't be able to equip the mud battle staff until you have level 30 attack and 30 magic. So I would also recommend having level 30 attack. But if you were to example do like the waterfall quest, which takes maybe like a half an hour, if if you're doing it slowly, then you'll have what level 33 attack. So you can easily wield this. This you want to wield the level 30 magic, um, and then that will take the runes that you're using to cast curse, the water and um or air, earth runes, sorry, I can't speak right now, the water and earth runes, both of them, and it'll cancel them out as it acts as both the water and earth. In that case, you'll only be using the mind, so I think it's like 5 GP per cast, so it is super cheap. But you will need about 638 uh, water runes to get you to that stage. So, to make my spell book look like this, all that I've done is I've gone into the filters that is underneath the spellbook tab here, and I've just clicked off all the thing the show teleport spells, show utility spells, show spells you lack the magic level to cast, show spells you lack the runes to cast, turn those all to X, and then just turn the show combat spells, that's the only one with a check mark in it. So this way I only get these three spells right here, and then I know the far right one is curse, and then all I have to do is just click on it, cast it on this guy, and simply just repeat. Um, it's it's as simple as that. 
just keep doing this all the way up until level either 43, 45, or 55, depending on which of the three methods next that I show you would like to go to. As I said, the amount of runes that I mentioned earlier are the max amount of runes that you will need. So once you are level 43, uh, you can move on to casting the Super Heat item spell. Uh, in, I would recommend doing this until level 45, and that's where I'm going to leave this off for the guide. I'm not going to do the calculations up to 55, as I would recommend doing the 40, uh, 45 to 55 method instead. But uh, from level 43 to 55, I'd recommend that you high uh, super sorry super heat about 210 uh, silver ores. This is what at the time of recording is the cheapest GP per XP. Now the mage XP that you'll get is going to be a constant at 53. The smithing XP will be different. So for example if you're wanting to go more for smithing XP and you have some gold smithing gauntlets you can do gold ore. You'll lose a little bit more GP but you'll get more smithing XP. But this is a mage guide. So you want to have about 200, sorry soon 211, my apologies it rounds up. So 211 nature runes and then 211 um, silver ore and then the only other item you'll need is a staff of fire you want to put your filter to utilities uh, you won't have the high elk at this time uh, that's just because my account has higher mage uh, that that still shows up but you'll have just these three which is the enhanced enhanced crossbow bolts the low elk which don't worry about that and the super heat which is the one that we're looking for with this you'll just simply cast it cast in an ore go back to the screen you'll get your xp drop and you just have to go through the inventory doing this for the whole entire inventory banking i would recommend getting a one click bank you'll bank all the silver bars pull out the silver ore and rinse and repeat like that until you get to level 45. And once you have got yourself to level 45, you can keep superheating. You can, at, a f at max efficiency, get more experience per hour superheating than you can doing the next method. But this next method is so much more AFK. It does cost a bit more GP. Uh, per XP, but at the same time, it's close to negligible. The amount of GP that you're actually losing is within the a couple hundred Ks, and later on in your account, once you get your stats up a little bit more, doing something like Zolara, you'll make like 100k a kill easy so honestly the amount of time and effort that you put in this is what i would recommend doing you can superheat all the way up to 55 you can totally do that uh, but i would recommend casting the teleport to camelot so for this you'll simply just want to put yourself on show teleport spells you want to have 1895 roughly depending on if you've used any other magic abilities or if you've just stuck to this exact amount of runes that we've used so far. Um, so roughly this many runes. Um, and a Staff of Air. This just allows you to teleport to Camelot and you'll do this uh, 1895 times which you literally just sit here and click casting just like this guy's doing. Uh, and you'll do this all the way up to level 55. Okay, so once you have it level 55, you can now cast High Alchemy. Now, this you can do all the way up to 95, uh, to 99, sorry. Uh, like you see, for example, this person over here and this person over here doing when they just stand at the bank and just cast the spell over and over. Uh, that isn't something I'd recommend as you get the 65 XP drop, but if you add in something like, for example, teleporting to Camelot, and doing the high elk together you now get a 55.5 xp drop for that camilla teleport and the the 65 xp for the high elk, tele, um, high elk spell in the same amount of time so it just makes it a lot more efficient yes you do use the law rune for casting uh, for like the cast to camelot but uh it is it is worth it in my opinion for sure to do both because it's a lot faster magic xp per hour than just high elking or just casting camelot teleport so for this, you want to have 1,126 nature runes, and the same amount of law runes of 1,126, the same amount of whatever item it is you're going to elk. I just have mind runes in here just to show the general strategy, but obviously you'll want to find something that when you high elk it, you don't lose as much money as these, I think they're like maybe 5 GP high elk or something, I don't even know. You want to find something, maybe like a rune arrow or something where you don't lose as much money when you high elk. Uh, that's something that you have to look at the time because the markets do fluctuate. I can't actually like if, if I tell you something now in two days from now It might not work. It's you just have to look it up at the time 
and find something where you don't lose as much money you obviously you're training a skill you will lose some amount of money that's uh, that's an inevitable uh, now I'm bringing a smoke battle staff just because this makes it so that I can use not only the high alchemy but also the camel teleport and I don't use air runes or fire runes but uh, if you don't have the 3.3 mil for the smoke battle staff that is completely fine just bring yourself about 5630 fire runes or air runes depending on which one is cheaper at the time right now they're both 5 gp so i just picked fire runes to bring and then bring a air staff with you as well just cast the teleport to camelot you don't use any of the air runes and when you help you just lose the five fire runes it's like 25 gp extra per cast it's nothing like bank breaking this maybe is what let's 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 see if this whole entire stack is worth 28k so it's not like it's really that big of a loss uh, overall but if you can't afford the smoke battle staff do bring that and then for the method you simply just go click on camelot click on your high elk once you've teleported click on that click back on the camelot teleport and just keep doing this over and over again and you'll just be able to just keep going 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 and just like this guy over here is doing you'll get a lot more xp doing that than if just high alking or just teleporting to camelot so if you would like, just as a disclaimer, once you've got to level 55, you can start doing the uh, RD teleport. Why I'm telling you not to do this over the Camelot teleport is it's an extra whole law rune per teleport, so an extra 200 something GP per teleport, so it will add up uh, cost a lot, and it's not that many teleports saved. Same thing with the Watchtower if you get that done, same with the Troll uh, Heim Teleport if you get uh, the quest for that. I can't remember what that is off the top of my head. Now, at level 61, you can start to High Elk and do the Troll Heim Teleport, or you can just keep doing the Camelot and the High Elk. It's really not that big of a difference calculating it. It comes to, like, a less of about 300-something casts, so it really... It, you, you'd save about 3,000 law runes to save yourself the time of about 300 casts, so it's probably worth not doing it. If you're somebody with a bigger bank, you can switch over once you're 61. Well, honestly, you could switch over once you're 51 to doing the RD teleport, to doing the Watchtower teleport once you're 58, and doing the um, te Trollheim teleport once you're level 61. And once you unlock the High Alchemy at level 55, you can do those in, car in correlation with those. All the way up to 70 or you can just keep doing the camelot teleport all the way up to 70 it is up to you and how much of a bank you have but i would recommend doing either the camelot and high elk to 70 or rd watchtower or trollheim depending on how much you want to spend which you should just do the biggest one that you have because they all, all the rd the watchtower and the trollheim both cost two law runes so there's no reason to not do the highest one there other than the quest that the watchtower and the trollheim well and also rd have attached with them so that is up to you uh, how big of a bank you have which one you would like to do but either way keep doing that exact same method of cast teleport high elk cast teleport high elk all the way up until level 70. i'm not going to be showing the runes needed for this as there's four different methods it's up to you but at maximum if you were doing the camelot and the high elk which would be the least amount which would be the sorry the least amount of experience per dual set of casts so teleport and high elk you'd need about 3613 casts so if you were to just buy that many law runes you obviously have to times that by two uh, for the RD Watchtower and Troll or and or Trollheim, depending on which one of those three that you want to do. If you were doing one of those, and if not, just three thousand six hundred thirteen law runes and nature runes and things to high elk, then you'd get yourself all the way up until level seventy. So you wouldn't need any more amount of runes than those, and you can just sell off the rest that you don't use. Uh, hence why I'm not going to go too in depth into this, as I already went into it from fifty five to the 61 which is when you can do the trollheim so it's it's really up to you on how you want to play this and we are going to resume this now once you have hit level 70. one last thing i would like to add before i move on to the level 70 and above is if you get yourself a tome of fire and put a singular burnt page inside of it it does act as unlimited fire runes uh, and it will not take the page out of it the page is only used if you are in combat but on splashing and doing non-combat sounds like high alking, you won't actually lose the page. At least I'm not certain on the splashing, but I am certain on the high alking and the teleporting that you won't lose the page. So you can also do this and 
instead of taking the smoke battle staff, it's really up to you. This is also a lot cheaper. Uh, I think it's about maybe like 500k. The book is it fluctuates a little bit, and the page is fairly cheap, like only a couple k. And you can also remove the page afterwards and just straight up resell the book and the page and get the majority of your money back. And that's unlimited fire runes as long as you don't cast a combat spell onto another NPC and it hits. So that is also another method, but I digress. We will move on to level 70 magic now. Okay, so once you have got yourself up to level 70 magic, you unlock this beautiful spell called the Ice Burst. This is what you'll be doing all the way up until 94, which then you unlock Ice Barrage, which Ice Barrage will take you all the way to 99. I'll be doing the Ice Burst and the Ice Barrage guide here together, as they're literally the exact same method, just depending on the level that you are, if you're using Ice Burst or Ice Barrage. So we will be both bursting and barraging, depending on your level again. The monkeys that are in the Monkey Madness 2 cave, now this is something that is fairly populated, so you will have to hop a bit to find an open world, but trust me, it is worth it. They are a lot of experience per hour, they aren't strong against mage, so you'll hit really accurately, and they do drop uh, some prayer potions, so you shouldn't have to worry about prayer much at all, especially if you're taking a gear setup like this. So if you look at my gear here, you might notice that it's very, very heavily oriented in the prayer bonus and not the attack bonus. Now the reason for this is because the attack bonus is just your accuracy. This is how, like, as it says here, increases your chance of hitting successfully when you attack. Now you will hit almost all the time on the monkeys. You, your attack accuracy doesn't matter that much because the monkeys have a very, very low uh, defense against magic. So you do not need to wear something like arms, which will give you a increase in your magic accuracy because you're gonna hit anyway. Now, if you can afford to get ancestral equipment, which is currently about 151 mil right now for the hat, robe, uh, top and robe bottom, then do bring that as not only does it increase your accuracy, but it actually increases the amount of damage that you can do, hence why you would want to bring that if you can't afford it. But as I'm assuming most people do not have a 150 million lying around for just their hat, body, and legs for this, uh, we are going to be going with the setup that gives us the most amount of prayer bonus, as this is the next best setup. So you want to have yourself any kind of mitre, the god does not matter, just that you have a mitre because you're looking for the prayer bonus. Now the cape, if you have the Arty Cloak 4, bring that. If you have the Arty Cloak 3, bring that. If you have the Arty Cloak 2, you can choose between bringing the Arty Cloak 2 or a skill cape, saying that it's trimmed. And if you have the just the Arty Cloak 1, then bring yourself a vestment cloak of any kind. Now the cloak that you get from the Major Arena 1 does have a better magic bonus, but it doesn't have any prayer bonus on it, nor does it have any attack damage bonus, so hence why we are bringing the Arty Cloak of whichever kind that you have. Now, once you get yourself to level 75 magic, you will want to get yourself the Imbued God Cape from the Mage Arena 2. That does give you more damage and accuracy, so that will be better. That is once you are at level 75 magic, though. For your amulet slot, you want to bring any kind of stole. Again, something like a fury doesn't matter, as you're not looking for the attack bonus. But once again, once you have got yourself to level 75 magic, you do want to get yourself an occult necklace. This will help a lot, as not only does it give you that little bit more accuracy, that again doesn't matter, but it also increases the amount of damage that you do, and it is fairly cheap at like 500k, so it is something that you do very much want to bring, but that is once you have lev hit level 75 magic, till then you'll just want to bring any kind of stole. Any blessing works, preferably the master wand. You can use the ancient staff, uh, but it does have a negative one to prayer bonus, which doesn't matter too much, so if you can't afford it, it's what it is, uh, but the master wand is definitely better. You can also bring the staff of the dead, but then you'll have to manually cast, which is just annoying. Also, you can bring the Kodai Wand, which is the best in slot here, but it, it costs a lot of money, just like the Ancestral, so it is up to you if you can afford it. For your robe, top and bottom, just bring any kind of um, vestment gear. Your I just, I just picked Ancient, because that was the first one that popped up, as it was A and A. You want to have a Book of Darkness in your offhand slot, as this gives you 
Well, prayer bonus. That's what we're looking for here. It's prayer bonus, prayer bonus, prayer bonus. A ring of the gods. Now, you will have this imbued. Uh, mine here is not imbued for some reason, but you would want to have the imbued version of this. If you don't have the imbued version of this, uh, a ring of suffering R does, or imbued as well, does work. Uh, but the Ring of the Gods is definitely the best ring here. The Seer's Ring does not help at all, again, as it is only a accuracy thing. Your best boots here will be the Holy Sandals. This is even better than the Eternal Boots, as the Eternal Boots do not give you any damage increase. So the Holy Sandals are the best in slot here. And also the Tormented Bracelet. This is great. It does cost a good bit of money. I think it's around 16 mil right now, just the same as the Ring of the Gods. But this not only increases your... Um, to accuracy which again doesn't matter but it increases your damage and you can wear this at level 70 so it is a great item to have so for your inventory you'll want to have eight prayer potions uh, this is an amount that you can base off of how you'll get prayer potions while you're there uh, these drop in one dose prayer potions though so it all depends on how high your prayer is and how high your magic is so how much damage you're gonna do what not uh, but I like to bring 8 prayer potions as that's enough for me to not have to worry about prayer at all. Bring yourself a sapphire lantern or some sort of thing to light the room up with. Uh, a lantern or the seer's headband for work perfect. You want to have a royal seed pod. You would have got this from the Monkey Madness 2 quest. A stamina potion for... Uh, this is just that you can run there easier. If you have not completed the quest, then do bring yourself a monkey grigri. Uh, to get there, you won't be able to use the Royal Seed Pot and whatnot, but I would recommend just completing the quest because there's no reason not to really. Bring yourself a Bone Crusher if you have charges. Don't go out of your way to make charges though. It is just a little bit of passive prayer XP that you can get, but it's not worth like going out of your way to get charges for the Bone Crusher. Also bring the Holy Wrench as it'll just make your prayer and give you more prayer, po prayer points per dose. And then a rune pouch with runes inside of it, depending on if you're casting Ice Burst from 70 to 94, or Ice Barrage from 94 to 99. Per cast, you're going to have of Ice Burst, 2 deaths, 4 chaos, and 4 water runes. And once you get to Ice Barrage, you want to bring, per cast, 4 death runes, 2 blood runes, and 6 water runes. So, for example, how my rune pouch is looking here with 2,000 deaths, 4,000 chaos, 8,000 water runes. That would be if you were to do ice burst. And then you just take out the chaos runes, add in blood runes if you were doing ice barrage. So once you have found yourself to the top of the tree here, if you just use the royal seed pod, you go to the bottom of the grand tree and work your way up. You talk to the glider pallet here and you'll be able to go to this monkey head in the bottom corner. This will bring you to a patrol itself. And then if you just come a little bit over here to the right, then you will see and investigate this little like door here, and you can just go inside of it, and then you would have gotten to the area where you would have done the tunnels in the Monkey Madness 2 quest. So from here, you simply just want to run around until you can start doing the path again, and you want to follow the path until the first time that you find the combination of both a fire like a, a lit fire camp and a hole just like this one that you can enter into the ground. You don't want to go into this one, you want to go into the second one that you find. So just go through your like the, this tunnel as you would have gotten it. Everybody has a different tunnel so you can't just take the same way that I do. But until you find yourself a fire and a hole combined and I will resume once I've gotten to my point. So once you've got to the point where you see both a fire and a enter hole option here where you see this kind of like the hole in the ground here, enter inside of it, make sure that you turn your melee prayer on as the monkeys down here can hit you, uh, I believe somewhere around 11, at least one I fell down in a hole earlier, uh, that is what I got hit without the prayer up. You'll want to run to the end of this tunnel here, now this is where the hardest part comes, is trying to find a open world, as this is a very good method, uh, it can be fairly hard to find a world, so as you can see there's someone here, I'm not going to crash them, so what I have to do is just run all the way back out and hop worlds and come back in. So I'll try a couple of worlds and see if I can find a free one. Okay, so unfortunately I am doing this at peak times and I cannot find a world to save my life. So you're basically just gonna be doing the exact same method as this individual over here is doing. Um, again, you're just not gonna have to have the attack bonus, the arms and whatnot, but Hey, he hasn't watched the guide yet, he'll learn after if he watches it. Uh, so, you'll just want to stand in the corner over here. What you'd preferably want to do is run between this spot and this spot and clump them up, which makes it a lot, uh, like they're 
a lot more clumped up, makes your barrage or ice burst hit a lot more, but it doesn't really matter too much if you're paying a little bit of attention and can just click in the middle of the clump. It really doesn't matter too much uh, if you do stack them or not. As you can see there, he's doing Ice Burst, which means he can attack 9 monkeys at once, so he can attack the whole entire square there. Uh, as you can see, you get the Prayer Potion once as a drop that fall on the ground here. Uh, if you need Prayer, you can just simply pick them up. You will get them at a fairly common rate, so you shouldn't have to run out of Prayer at all, especially with this gear on. And then you simply just want to do what he's doing here, which is just attack the biggest clump that you can see. Whenever your clumps get too low, just run from one side of the room to the other side of the room. They'll all re-aggro onto you, and just keep going, just rinsing and repeating until you lose aggro, which in that case you just have to run to a little bit up the way here, and then run right back, and then they will all follow you back there, and you can just keep going until your runes are done. Again, I do apologize for not being able to actually show you it and just having to show you someone else doing it, but I don't feel like crashing somebody uh, for recording this video. And it is, it's a great method, so a lot of people do do it, but you simply just have to hop around, spend 10 minutes hopping around. You should find a world saying that you're not on at peak times like I am, and you'll just be able to do that exact same method of just bursting or barraging the monkeys as much as you basically bring runes for because you shouldn't ever run out of prayer, especially in this kind of gear. Okay, so you also have the options to do some lunar spells, which one of them is Spin Flax, which you can do at level 76 magic. You'll need Astral Runes, Nature Runes, and a Air Staff, just that you won't have to have any Air Runes with you, uh, to cast a spell. You want to have the Nature Runes, the Astral Runes, and then a third item in your inventory, just so that you can only have 25 Flax in your inventory at once, as if you use the spell, you do 5 Flax into both, string at a time. This means that if you were to have, for example, 26 in here, then you could cast an extra one cast, which would only turn one flax into a bowstring, so you'd just be losing extra money that you don't need to lose that way. Basically, all you'll do is you'll just have your inventory, and you'll just click this just click this flax spell, and just keep clicking on it until you see the XP drop happen five times, and then simply bank, bank all the bowstring, have your things at all, of course, make all the bowstring, pull out more flax, and just keep going like that until however many flax that you want to do are done. You should get somewhere around 80k magic experience and 80k crafting experience per hour. Uh, this can make you some amount of money depending on how much the bowstrings are going for at the time and how much the runes are, so do look into that to see how much money you might make or lose doing this method. At level 78, magic and if you have the fremenic hard diaries done you can cast tan leather which will tan up to five hides so again you want to have 25 in your inventory so you'll want to have some nature runes some astral runes now you'll want to have a fire staff on you and then again a third item in your inventory just that you can't withdraw 26 um, that is just the easiest way to do it you could also just have your bank set tony withdraw 25 have your x option to that but that just just have three items in inventory makes it easier same exact thing of just clicking the the spell just keep spamming it until all 25 are made bank it and pull out more and then just keep going that is the whole entire method with this, if you're doing it uh, fairly efficiently, you can get somewhere around 180,000 experience per hour, which is not bad. Do note that you can you can make some money uh, with this, depending on the prices. Chances are you'll lose a little bit of money uh, because you're turning the hides into leathers. You can make money though, but with the runes that you use per five, it does cost a lot more than if you were to just take them to a tanner. So do watch out for that. You can make money, you can lose money. At the time when you do this, you'll just have to check the GE prices and go from there. For the next method, which is the string jewelry, you'll need level 80 magic. You want to have yourself astral runes and preferably a mud battle staff so that you can have both the water and earth runes on you through to that unlimited you won't have to use any in your inventory you'll just want to have your set of astral runes and then 27 ruby amulet use uh, this will chances are lose you money but it can also be pretty afk all you have to do is just click on the string jewelry and it'll actually auto do it for you you don't even have to keep clicking on it you don't have to spam click it it'll do it for you it'll do the entire inventory and then all you have to do is just bank and keep going like that this method will get you somewhere around 
uh, 145,000 experience per hour. You can get up to 150 if you're like super efficient with your banking and whatnot, but the majority of people aren't. But do note that it will lose you a good bit of GP. If we price check here, two astral runes and one ruby amulet, you is 1,400 GP, and a strong amulet now is only 1,100, so you will be losing a good bit of GP. But it is fairly AFK, something that you can do with the bank. You just simply click, it casts for you. You do get four crafting experience as well, so you get like around 6,000 crafting XP. Uh, but this isn't the worst method, isn't the best method, but it can cost you a bit of GP depending on the prices. Okay, and for our last lunar method, it will be casting the Plank Make spell. This you will have to have level 86 magic for, and the Hard Fremenic Diaries done. You want to have yourself Astral Runes, Nature Runes, your some amount of coins as you will have to pay for each Plank or log that you turn into Plank, and then also a Staff of Earth for the Unlimited Earth Runes. You'll simply want to click on the spell and then click on the log and just keep repeating this. You'll get an eight, a 90 experience drop each time. This can get you about 160k magic experience per hour. This can also make you some amount of money. Right now what it doesn't is if you see two astral runes, one nature rune, 1,500 coins, and one log is one or 2,463 GP. And the, whoop, didn't mean to put the whole entire inventory in there. And the plank right now is only 2,000 GP, so you're losing somewhere around 400 GP per plank. But depending on the prices of the runes, the logs itself, and the plank, you can make money doing this. So do simply just do the research, just check the price of the runes, the log, and the plank at the time when you want to do the spell. See if it is something that can make you some money, because in the past it has been able to make money. Sometimes it can, sometimes it doesn't. It's a fluctuating economy. So just check into that, and this can make you some money while you train and get that 160,000 experience per hour. Okay, and for our second to last method, we are back here at the Monk of Zamrock in the uh, Varrock Castle here. This is something that you can do. Any monster that you can find that you can save spot, uh, you can do this too. This is just one that was easily locatable. Uh, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be high alking and you're going to be stunning. You might see people do this a lot on, for example, the Deadman Mode Tournament, uh, as this is something they can do in the safe zone and also gives a lot of magic XP. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cast stun on the target, and then you're also going to want to high alk at the same time, and just keep rinsing and repeating this. It is fairly click intensive, but as you can see, it is fairly good experience per hour. You get a 90 XP drop, a 65, and you can just keep going like that. Uh, to your heart's content or up to 99. For this, it is recommended to have a mud battle staff and a tome of fire with just one page inside of it, as that's all you need to have that charge, so you have unlimited fire runes. You'll also want to have some nature runes and some soul runes to cast the stun and the high elk. Disregard the body runes that are in here, I don't know why I still have them in there. And then something to high elk. Again, I pulled out my mind runes, but as I said, in the previous clips where you were high alking stuff, find something profitable to high alk, or at least something that you don't lose money on. Chances are you want to find something profitable. Uh, but that is the second to last method. This is a fairly nice method. You do need to have a level 80 magic to do this, to cast stun, and then level 55 for the alchemy. But it is a fairly decent uh, method to get your magic experience. And for this method, you can hope to get around 180,000 experience per hour. Uh, that is not a bad amount of magic experience per hour, especially due to the fact that it gives no HP XP. So if you're an account that is trying to not level your HP at all and stay at level 10, then this is a pretty viable method for you at 180,000 experience per hour. And the final method for this long video about how to train mage is going to be magic imbue. Now, if you're somebody who's trying to be really, really efficient at maxing your account, you're going to become fairly familiar with this spell, because at 82 magic, you're going to use it basically to get yourself to 99 magic, uh, making it magic a zero time skill once you get it to 82. Um, this magic imbuing you can do while, for example, training agility, or if you're really trying hard while do training mining or training fishing. You just have to click on the Magic Abuse spell every 12 to 13 seconds. I believe it's 12.5 uh, seconds per time that you can use the spell. 
This spell takes two astral runes, seven fire runes, seven water runes, so it is highly recommended to have a steam battle staff on while you do this so that you don't lose the seven um, fire, seven water runes every time you cast a spell. But it is dependent on what it is you're doing. You can, for example, do this while training Slayer, but again, the fact that you're losing seven and seven of the two res runes respectively makes it pretty expensive to do without the staff and even with the staff doing two astrals per cast can be pretty expensive uh, but again this makes it so that while you're doing agility or something you can passively get 99 um, mage while you're doing that and some other skilling so it is up to you if you want to make this if you want to do this it does make the game a little bit more uh, challenging because you do have to remember to click this every 12 seconds uh, but it is all based on your preference on how you'd like to play. And you have made it to the end of the video. If you have stuck around this long, I thank you. I know this is a very, very long video, but it has, Mage is a fairly in-depth skill. So hopefully I have done it justice and covered the majority of it. If this video has helped you, a like and a subscription is much, much appreciated. Also, if you have any questions about mage or actually other runescape related topics feel free to put them in the comment section down below and i will get back to you hopefully this guide has helped you get your 99